The U.S. Air Force's classified, next-generation fighter platform is still in the design phase and has not fully reached its engineering, manufacture, and development stage, the service's secretary acknowledged this month. The revelation represents a step back from June, when Frank Kendall publicly declared the highly classified next-generation air dominance program had already passed the vital milestone. We have now begun on the EMD program to do the development aircraft that we're going to take into production," he remarked during a Heritage Foundation event at the time. It also has some analysts questioning if the military can reach its aim of deploying the first variants of the sixth-generation fighter by the end of this decade. Kendall delivered the broadest update thus far on the development of NGAD at a September 19 discussion with reporters at the Air and Space Forces Association's Air, Space, and Cyber Conference. Kendall's June statements, in which he also indicated the Air Force will provide certain NGAD capabilities by the end of the decade, startled some in the aviation community and suggested the program was further along in the process than first assumed. Several defense outlets, including Defense News, reported on his words at the time as implying NGAD had formally reached the EMD phase. Asked about his June statements during the Defense News Conference on September 7, Kendall said he hadn't intended the suggestion. I'm an old school guy, Kendall stated. I've been around doing this stuff for a long time, and I still think of engineering and manufacturing development as a phase in which you are working on the new design. Asked again about the program at the Air, Space and Cyber Conference, Kendall explained that the military is still working on NGAD's architecture and that he used the word EMD in my colloquial sense. He stated the Milestone B decision, which comes after the preliminary design review and is a precondition for entering the EMD phase, has not taken occurred. Air Force Procurement Chief Andrew Hunter stated this month that the end of this decade is the service's aim for fielding the manned platform component of NGAD. Its drone wingmen, which the Air Force now refers to as collaborative combat aircraft, are anticipated to arrive sooner, he added. Kendall's acknowledgement that NGAD has not entered the EMD phase, much less finished the design process, raises the possibility the program might not reach initial operating capability by the end of the decade. Heritage Foundation think tank fellow and former Air Force fighter pilot John Venable told Defense News, it might happen by 2030, but the odds are against it happening by then, he added. Heather Penny, a former S-16 pilot and senior resident fellow at the Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies, is similarly doubtful the Air Force can meet its target by the end of the decade. I have great skepticism that NGAD will achieve a meaningful full-rate production milestone C decision before the end of the decade, Penny added. It would be logical to predict that full-rate production will not begin until sometime into the 2030s. I would love for the Air Force to show this wrong. The Milestone C decision comes at the end of the EMD phase of the acquisition process, and it is when a choice is made whether or not to proceed a program into the production and deployment phase. The Milestone C decision comes at the end of the EMD phase of the acquisition process, and it is when a choice is made whether or not to proceed a program into the production and deployment phase. Kendall's statements have also garnered the attention of the Pentagon's Inspector General. In a September 26 letter to Heidi Shu, the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering, the Office of Inspector General said it planned to begin an examination of NGAD this month. The agency seeks to evaluate to what degree the Air Force has proved the program's essential technologies were mature enough to warrant advancing to the EMD phase. During his June comments, Kendall noted the average Air Force procurement program takes a little less than seven years to progress from commencing the EMD phase to first operating capability. Later, at the Air, Space, and Cyber Conference, he said NGAD could be able to reduce that timescale. I'm not convinced NGAD will be an ordinary program," he told reporters. Kendall has stated he is pushing Air Force acquisition officials to get novel capabilities, like his NGAD's autonomous drone wingman, onto the field quicker than the procedure generally permits. For example, 
Kendall stated he isn't interested in giving demonstrations or experiments until absolutely essential. If we don't need it to decrease risk, we should go immediately to development for production and get there as rapidly as we can, he stated in June. If the risk is significant and we need to do some things merely to be wise, to address that risk first, we should do that in a targeted, efficient way. I have a sense of urgency about gaining new skills, and I'm ready to take some risk there. While Venable and Penny emphasize there's a paucity of public information about NGAD, they acknowledge the program still faces many challenges. The Air Force wants it to have an autonomous drone wingman capability, contain sixth-generation technology, and operate as a family of systems rather than simply a single manned aircraft. It will also be pricey, costing hundreds of millions of dollars apiece, Kendall told legislators earlier this year. Because the program hasn't reached the EMD phase, passed the Milestone B review, or concluded its design, Venable said the Air Force will have to dramatically shorten its seven-year time frame to meet the 2030 objective. You may call me a skeptic, but there is no track record that suggests they can achieve it, Venable said. If you're going to buy entirely commercial off-the-shelf equipment, that can be done. This is one where it's leading-edge technology. He and Penny concluded the Air Force might not attain first operating capability with NGAD until far into the 2030s. This is certainly going to be an advanced capability, Penny added. Because of the classification, there's a lot that we don't know about it anything from design materials to production to capabilities. It's also unknown how the numerous capabilities composing the family of systems would interact to make up the NGAD platform, Penny added. And this will take substantial testing. It's probably not just one airplane. It's probably several, Penny remarked. And we'll need to establish that NGAD can link and interact with other capabilities, whether or not those are within other domains, or whether or not it's within its own formation. With the Air Force planning to retire older airframes, such as non-combat-capable F-22 fighters, and move part of the savings to NGAD, Venable is afraid the military may be making a hazardous gamble that NGAD arrives by the end of the decade. If that does not happen, and this slides into the next decade, which is more probable than not, it would be a fool's errand to really cash in functional combat platforms now on the bet that no Las Vegas gambler would take," Venable added. Although Kendall will not divulge NGAD's capabilities, he maintains certain the program is important for the Air Force to stay up with sophisticated adversaries, notably China. Asked at the Defense News Conference if the nation can afford an air platform costing multiple hundreds of millions of dollars per many times the price tag of an F-35 fighter. Kendall responded, Can the nation afford not to have air superiority? We have to have air superiority. 